Okay, what we're trying to do today is give you a, a little instruction on the split jerk. We're going to do a short video here and basically it's going to be how I tend to teach the, the split jerk and my concept of what the split jerk is. Um, first of all, I like to change the idea of the split jerk into um, away from the concept of taking a step forward or getting your head under the bar and make it into a really uh, a vertical and up down motion. Your feet happen to be going out slightly, but they're really driving into the platform, uh, both in the front and the back. Uh, and one of the first things we do when we're teaching the, uh, the split jerk, or one of the things I do, is I start with drills. Drills that are going to set your body up for doing the thing correctly. One of the first basic drills is this drill against the power rack here, where you set an athlete uh, with his hips and his shoulders against the, uh, against the uh, vertical strut, and you put his hands up here just like you'd have a bar on it, and basically his weight now is on his heels, and he's gonna go down and up, keeping his back and his butt basically in contact with the, with the uh, strut at the bottom. Up, yep, like that. And this is a basic jerking motion right here. This is the dip and drive of the jerk, okay? Now we're gonna go on to another exercise that we start very early before we even show the jerk form, as far as I'm concerned, or the jerk positions, and we'll get to that right now. So here are a couple of other basic drills uh, that are emphasizing the fact that you stay on the rear part of the foot during the dip and the drive. Uh, basically, put somebody on the edge of a platform and hang their toes off and make them go up and down. First, we're gonna do the same drill we just did over on the rack there and uh, Dan's gonna do that now. Okay. okay, this stops somebody from leaning into the forefoot. You've gotta eliminate that before you get to instructing the jerk, really. Okay, now Dan's gonna do what I call a heel jump, and the purpose of this is not to elevate, uh, necessarily uh, learn how to elevate off the heels. It's, it's for the brain to understand that you can be on the rear of the foot and deliver power from the legs through the hips and up through the body. The brain doesn't really know that naturally because most of the times that it does things like that, it's on the forefeet. Uh, so we're gonna teach it that it can do it pretty well uh, through the back of the foot. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, so what you see there is Dan's not getting to his forefeet, he's staying back, he's staying vertical, which is very important in the doing the jerk. And he's learning to deliver snap and power up through his torso by using uh, power or force coming from uh, the balances on the back of his feet, okay? So now we're, now we're gonna go see what the basics of a, a jerk position is, a split jerk position is, and then we're gonna see how we get to it. What we want to talk about is what the basics of the split jerk is, or the, the, the position that happens. And the position that happens is not much different than a walking step. If you stride forward and put your foot down and hold it here, you're almost in a split jerk right now. If you turn your toe in and keep your back heel up, you are in a split jerk right now. So, And another thing is the back foot has propelled the front foot. And there you go you've got a split jerk, and that's basically all it is. It doesn't have to be thought of any differently than this. And that's how it goes. Here, boom, okay? So that's just the position of a split jerk in its most basic form. Now we go to look at some of the, the tricky things that have to be done to support weight overhead when you do a split. So we're gonna have Dan position himself here, and uh, we'll do this um, here. I think it'd be all right. And come on over, Dan. Put yourself in the split, no hands above the head, just put yourself into a split, turn, okay. Turn the toe in slightly, and if you can, turn this one in. Now, some of the things that have to happen uh, in a split jerk is you have to step out, uh, which is tricky, because we want to get rid of that term very shortly, um, and you want to put your front foot in a way that this shin is vertical, and the pressure goes down through the heels, the back leg, the knee is gonna be bent at some angle here. The back foot is gonna be plantar flexed and the heel can be straight back or even turned slightly out. And the feet have to be no closer together than they started at the, at the starting position. They cannot cross in. They can go straight back and forward or they can go to the outside slightly, but they can't go towards the middle like a tight wire. 
We don't want that because you're going to have to balance something over your head, and that's not going to be good for that. Okay. The second thing here about the jerk is the hands, are going to, the arms are going to be up over the head, and they're going to be behind the head, right over the shoulders here. You're going to have shoulders extended upwards. The weight's going to be actually supported from the back muscles here, lats and others, right between the shoulder blades. Elbows are going to be in a certain position. That's going to vary, uh, vary individually a little bit. The bar is going to be right here in the cup of the hand, and the wrists are going to be turned back. The wrists are not going to be straightforward like a punch. They're going to be laying here like a cradle. Okay, and basically, the support position is going to be bar, shoulder, hip, okay? Sometimes the knee will be under the hip. Most times in reality, the knee is slightly behind the hip. Okay, and that's the basic position for a jerk. Okay, so again, we're going to talk about what my concept is about the jerk and how I teach it. Uh, and it's a little different than most. Most people talk about taking a step forward, getting your foot so far forward under the bar, getting your head in past the bar and such like that. I don't talk about that. I talk about going up and down. Uh, I talk about the dip, the drive, and then stabbing the floor in the front and stabbing the floor in the back downwards with your legs. They're gonna be in certain positions, but I want you stabbing the both downward into the platform. And one of the things I came up with is putting a little X behind the back leg and making people hit the target. And, I, and matching that speed with how fast their arms get up, get to the bar, get the bar up to full length and, back, and behind their head. So we accomplish that stepping through without actually talking much about the stepping through. Uh, I think that confuses the brain. The brain would much rather step horizontally than drive downward and upward. Uh, so again, this is as much in weightlifting is, this is a little bit counterintuitive, but this is how I teach it and this accomplishes the same thing. We have people getting the bar behind their head, above their shoulders and keeping their torsos vertical. So I'm going to have Danny do a few and we're going to watch what happens. And let's get a shot of the X and uh, we'll see what happens. Good. leg straight at the start. Straight but not stiff. Dip and drive. Good. Close. Make sure the front shin stays vertical. Get the back foot down quicker. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. And what we have here is a situation where the back foot, which is slightly bent and has the back uh, the back leg is slightly bent and the back foot is plantar flexed, reaches the floor first and pushes the athlete through. That's your step through, if you will. It's going to push you through. You have to know to get the heel down and to keep the shin straight. We want to do this and we want to, in our minds, aim for that X no matter what's on the bar. As weights get heavier, your foot is naturally going to go back further, but you're going to think in your mind that you're driving it down towards that X. When that back foot gets planted, it's going to drive your front leg down and into the platform in the front. And you're going to hit your position and stop and steady the thing. The other thing that has to happen here is you have to teach your arms and uh, your arms to uh, fire up very quickly because it's going to happen very quickly. You're not going to give yourself a lot of time here, but speed is the idea. Okay, so the concept I want to get through to people is that you don't want to go any wider with your, your feet front to back as than you have to. I don't want to go way out here for 40 kilos if I don't have to. You should never have to. Um, and obviously we also don't want to go in here. We can go out here to widen our base a little bit. That's acceptable okay with both feet turned in but what we really want to guard against is stepping too far in 
that slow. And probably what's going to happen is your brain is not going to deliver the force up through the bar that you could because it's already thinking ahead to taking a step forward, which it prefers to do. So again, how I teach it is that this is totally an up-down situation. Dip, drive, and then drive your legs down, drive your arms up. So it stays in the vertical. Even as you get longer from front to back, uh, you are thinking that you are going down through the platform and your back foot is getting to the platform first. The back foot being plantar flexed makes, and barely bent at the knee is going to make that back leg longer and it's going to force your front leg down into the platform very quickly, which also means your hips are coming forward. And that gives you a better jerk with better support quicker. Let's go over a couple of things about bar positioning on the shoulders and hand and arm positioning and what happens during the initial dip and drive with the bar and with the shoulders. First of all, the bar is on the clavicle behind the deltoid, not ever on the deltoid by choice. It's behind the front deltoid across the skeleton. We want to keep it on the skeleton because you're going to deliver force through, through the skeleton and it's going to you're going to get as much out of it as you can get if the bar is in contact with the skeleton when the force comes up from the legs and the hips. The arms usually are a little down. The hands usually have the bar somewhere in the palm, usually the top of the palm, and then nice and relaxed. You have to keep these arms relaxed before you jerk. They, if, if not, they can't finish with the punch that they have to do at the top. Another thing I want to clear up while I'm up here talking about this area is when you dip and drive, go ahead, dip and drive, just dip and drive. When you drive, to drive it off your shoulders, you do not lift your shoulders. Go ahead and do that. Just push your shoulders. You do not do that. You leave the shoulders alone. They're going to lift. They're going to, they're going to get higher after the bar leaves the skeleton. Okay, it's going to happen immediately after it, but you don't do that to help the bar go or you put pressure on your arms and you slow the action down actually, okay? The arms and shoulders are meant to punch you down to position, not to drive the bar off your shoulders. So this is a pretty good position here. Um, and you're, of course, you're in the back half of the foot at this time. And you take a deep breath and then go through your motion. Dip, drive, dip, drive. Yeah, that was a good one. 